This is the last video in our series of six on how to support walls with some something in a floor. And again, we have the soil here and the concrete footing, concrete uh, slab there, except for this one here, we actually have some more concrete in here because it's a bigger load. Let's say something like this would be a situation where you have a lot of weight. Now, first thing I'd like to say is in the last video, the beam was in the floor. You could actually have the same situation with the uh, pad and the post, but have a beam in the floor. Um, so this, this would be common. And then the plates, of course, would run through. So this type of situation might be a little more common if you have a larger beam um, but it's not going to be uncommon either to have a larger beam or you might have a beam that uh, butts the sheathing and then comes down you know maybe it's a six by six by 16 where you're coming below the plate something like that zoom in here Something like this might require a doubler, double floor joist, a lot of weight coming down on something like this. You could actually have a concentrated load where you have a post here. This could be a non-bearing wall with a concentrated load. You got a post coming down here and then this beam is just to carry the additional weight of the concentrated load. Another view here. Again, this is going to require a strap to strap the plates together, whether it's going to be on the side or on the very top, depending on what the engineer wants. Now let's take a look at the concrete pads. They are going to be larger. This is going to, a situation like this, you're going to have a lot of weight. It's going to require additional um, concrete, something, a footing to distribute the load. So if this is a remodeling project, this is going to be a nightmare. Trust me, I've done plenty of them, and uh, they aren't easy. You know, it's kind of a pain in the butt to do something like that. And then when, when you're done and all, it's, all the concrete's filled in, it looks the same as it was when you started. You don't really get any uh, award-winning prizes for that, uh, even though you know by doing all the hard work. So again... Something like this, large concrete pads. You can't just build something like this without this, without an engineer, and expect it to uh, be okay. So, and an engineer is drawing this stuff in. They're just they are doing the math. They know what's necessary to make this building last. And most of the time, you don't, as a contractor, uh, construction worker or a homeowner doing doing your own work so just keep that in mind I recommend like I said in video number one hiring a structural engineer if you're going to be doing any modifications to the wall framing system or the floor so that's it for the series feel free to leave any questions in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible Go to the website for more videos on walls and engineering. I will also have a complete list of the videos in this series along with other videos that I have already made. Video.gregvan.com structural engineering or go to the gregvan.com website, any one of them, and look for the video box in the upper left-hand corner. Once you get to the video website, click on the structural engineering link and you should be good to go. You should be where you need to be.